Two sets of things determine how much of a product you will buy or how much a firm will offer. The price of the product and everything else. To discuss market dynamics, we start by putting the price aside and focusing on the everything else. Events that cause consumers to want to purchase more of a product or that make it easier for consumers to purchase a product are said to increase demand. Events that cause consumers to want to purchase less of a product or that make it harder for consumers to purchase a product are said to decrease demand. For example, making cars safer causes people to want to purchase more cars than before. Making cars safer causes an increase in the demand for cars. Reducing people's incomes causes people to want to purchase fewer gym memberships. So reducing people's incomes causes the demand for gym memberships to decline. Making hot dogs cheaper causes people to want to purchase more hot dogs and therefore more ketchup also. Making hot dogs cheaper causes the demand for ketchup to increase. Events that cause producers to want to offer more of a product for sale or make it easier to offer a product are said to increase supply. Events that cause producers to want to offer less of a product for sale or make it more difficult to offer the product are said to decrease supply. For example, making computer chips cheaper makes it easier for computer producers to offer computers. Making computer chips cheaper increases the supply of computers. Using shovels instead of a backhoe to dig swimming pools makes it harder to produce swimming pools. So using shovels instead of backhoes decreases the supply of swimming pools. What happens when demand and supply change? The quantity sold of a good moves in the same direction as the change in demand or supply. The price of the good moves in the same direction as the change in demand but in the opposite direction of the change in supply. Let's return to the two questions economists care about. First, when an event impacts a market, what happens to the price of the product? Second, when an event impacts a market, what happens to the quantity bought and sold of the product? To unravel what happens in a market, answer the following questions. First, what is the market we're discussing? Second, what is the event Third, what effect did the event have on demand and supply in the market we're discussing? Let's try some examples. Consider the market for gasoline. What happens to the market for gasoline when summer arrives and people want to travel more? First, we're discussing the market for gasoline. Second, the event is the arrival of summer that causes people to want to drive more. Third, ignoring the price of gas people's desire to drive more means that they want more gas. The demand for gas has increased. Now that we know what's happened to demand, we can figure out what happens to price. When the demand for gas increases, we know that the price of gas will rise and the quantity of gas bought and sold will rise. Consider the market for food. What happens when farmers have a plentiful harvest? First, we're discussing the market for food. Second, the event is a plentiful harvest. Third, ignoring the price of food, producers' abilities to offer the food has increased. The supply of food has increased. Now that we know what's happened to the supply of food, we can figure out what happens to price. When the supply of food increases, we know that the price of food will fall and the quantity of food bought and sold will rise. Now, here's a harder one. Consider the market for fast food. The government increases the minimum wage, which forces fast food restaurants to pay their workers more. But at the same time, the government publishes a report saying that people who avoid eating fast food live longer. Here, two separate events are affecting the market for fast food at the same time. We have to deal with them separately. Begin with the market for fast food. What happens when the minimum wage increases? We're talking about the market for fast food. The event is an increase in the minimum wage. Ignoring the price of fast food, producers' ability to offer fast food has decreased. The supply of fast food has decreased. When the supply of fast food decreases, we know that the price of fast food will rise and the quantity of fast food bought and sold will fall. Now, consider the market for fast food. What happens when the government reports that avoiding fast food makes you live longer? We're discussing the market for fast food. 
The event is a report that you live longer when you don't eat fast food. Ignoring the price of fast food, people's desire to buy fast food has decreased. The demand for fast food has decreased. When the demand for fast food decreases, we know that the price of fast food will fall. The quantity of fast food bought and sold will also fall. Now that we've seen what effects each of these events will have separately, we can put them together. We know that the supply of fast food will decrease, and we know that the demand for fast food will decrease. So we know that the quantity of fast food sold will decrease. But what happens to the price of fast food depends on whether the decrease in supply is larger or smaller than the decrease in demand. Now that we have these tools, you can take any event, for example, a war, an increase in the population, a new technology, if you can know what effect this event will have on demand and supply, you can predict what will happen to the price of a good and the quantity of the good that's bought and sold.